non-fund based facilities of banks. We all know that a bank provides fund based and non-fund based facilities to the customer. In this lesson, we will go through the following step by step. The meaning of non-fund based facilities of banks, letter of credit and guarantee, the difference between letter of credit and guarantee, the RBI norms of non-fund based facilities. After going through this presentation, you should be able to discuss non-fund based credit facilities, explain letter of credit, identify types of letters of credit, differentiate between guarantees and types of guarantees, understand RBI guidelines for non-fund based. Non-fund based credit facilities are commitment in writing given by the bank on behalf of the customer to pay contingent upon an event. In other words, the credit facilities given by the banks where actual bank funds are not involved are termed as non-fund based facilities. The credit facilities given by the banks where actual bank funds are not involved are termed as non-fund based facilities. These facilities are divided in three broad categories as letters of credit, guarantees, co-acceptance of bills or deferred payment guarantees. It is written undertaking given by a bank on behalf of its customer, who is a buyer, to the seller of goods, promising to pay a certain sum of money provided the seller complies with the terms and conditions given in the L oblique C. A letter of credit is opened by an importer or applicant to ensure that the documentation requested reflects and proves that the seller has performed under the requirements of the underlying sales contract by the exporter by making them conditions of the letter of the credit. It is generally required when the seller of goods and services deals with the unknown parties or feels the necessity to safeguard his interest. Letter of credit may be revocable or irrevocable and banker issuing letter of credit undertakes an unconditional obligation upon himself and charge a fee for the same. The transfer of credit is not similar to the right of assignment of benefits to which the beneficiary may become entitled under a letter of credit. The beneficiary is having right to assign the proceeds to which may be or may become entitled under the provisions of applicable law, even case of non-transferable credits. Types of letter of credit are revocable letter of credit. It will not offer any protection and should not be accepted as beneficiary of credit. They may be amended or cancelled without prior warning or notification to the beneficiary. Irrevocable letter of credit. It is mainly in use and offers complete protection to the seller against subsequent development against his interest. Every letter of credit must clearly indicate whether it is revocable or irrevocable. In the absence of such indication, the credit shall be deemed to be irrevocable. Revolving letter of credit. The concept of revolving letter of credit is best illustrated by the following example. Let us presume that goods of the total value of rupees 60 lakhs are required to be purchased over a period of one year and requirement of those goods at a time is approximately rupees 10 lakhs. If the terms of payment are under L oblique C, the buyer may have two options as under A. To open a letter of credit for rupees 60 lakhs valid for one year and permit part shipment or B to open letters of credit for rupees 10 lakhs each on six different occasions. Option A not only requires very high limits from the bank but will result in high cost of operations by way of commission charges. Option B involves a lot of inconvenience as the LC will be required to be opened six times. To obviate such difficulties, a revolving letter of credit can be opened under which the amount of L oblique C is renewed or reinstated after the original L oblique C amount has been utilized.
Thus, a revolving letter of credit for rupees 10 lakhs valid for one year may be opened in the above example. After negotiation and settlement of bills drawn under this, the letter of credit amount may again be reinstated by the bank. The amount reinstated in such a manner will again become available for negotiation. Transferable letter of credit. A letter of credit that can be transferred only if it is specifically stated as transferable by the original beneficiary to one or more second beneficiaries is known as transferable letter of credit. Back-to-back -back letter of credit. Back-to-back -back credit is a letter of credit which is backed by other letters of credit and is also used when middleman is involved in a sale transaction. Red clause letter of credit. All letters of credit as discussed above provide a sort of guarantee of payment against documents which are drawn strictly in terms of subject letter of credit. In other words, the benefit of letter of credit accrues only when shipment of goods is completed. Red clause letter of credit goes a step further and authorizes the advising bank to grant an advance to the beneficiary at the pre-shipment stage itself. DA oblique DP Documents against acceptance DA A buyer is required to accept a seller's time draft, thus acknowledging obligation to pay at the specific future date. Documents against payment DP A buyer is required to pay a seller's side draft in order to obtain shipping documents. Payment is made on presentation of the side draft by a bank to the buyer usually one or two weeks after shipment. Guarantee is an undertaking given by the bank on behalf of an applicant customer to a beneficiary to pay a certain sum of money up to a date subject to the applicant's default. A guarantee is issued on behalf of a customer by an issuing bank. Guarantee is a contract to perform the promise or discharge the liability of a third person in case of his default. In the ordinary course of business, the bank often issues guarantees on behalf of its customers in favor of third parties. The person in whose favor the guarantee has been issued is the beneficiary. A bank guarantee is always issued subject to time amount. Broadly, a bank guarantee is classified as performance and financial guarantee. Guarantees are generally issued to government departments for fulfillment of contracts for supply of goods or for rendering services or in lieu of security deposit or tender money. There are two types of guarantee. Performance guarantees are those which secure performance of contract not involving loan transaction or financial obligations. Performance with regard to construction of building, installation of plant and machinery within a given time frame and with agreed specification. In performance guarantees, guarantees given to secure advance payment in place of security deposit or earnest money, deposit or tender deposit to secure adjustment of mobilization advance, to fulfill the requirements under the bid bonds. Next, financial guarantees. Guarantees for payment of determined liabilities towards tax, excise duties, custom duties, octroi, etc. The guarantees which are given to secure loan transaction or financial obligations, whereby the guarantor, the bank, undertakes to make payment to the beneficiary within the limits of a stated sum of money in the event of default by the principal debtor to pay or repay in accordance with the terms and conditions of a contract between the principal debtor and the beneficiary. While issuing financial guarantees, it should be ensured that the customer would be in a position to reimburse the bank in case the guarantee is invoked. In the case of performance guarantees, due caution should be exercised to ensure that the customer has the necessary experience, capacity and means to perform the obligations under the contract and is not likely to commit any default. A letter of credit is a bank's direct undertaking to the supplier called the beneficiary to pay. When a letter of credit is in use, the issuing bank does not wait for the buyer to default and 
for the seller to invoke the undertaking. In contrast, a guarantee is a written contract stating that in the event the primary party or the buyer is unable or unwilling to pay its dues to the supplier, the bank as guarantor to the transaction the BG user would pay the client's debt to the supplier. In other words, a bank guarantee is an undertaking of a bank on behalf of its customer. But this comes into play only when the principal party, the buyer, has failed to pay its supplier. Do note this key point. Essentially, the bank becomes a co-signer for its customer purchases. Hence, in a BG, the initial claim is still settled primarily that is first against the bank's client and not the bank itself. Should the client default, only then would the bank which has issued the BG agree to pay for its client's debts on behalf of its client. This is a type of contingent guarantee. A bank guarantee therefore is more risky for the merchant and less risky for the bank. But this is not the case with a letter of credit. With a bank guarantee if a client defaults, the bank assumes liability. With a letter of credit, liability rests solely with the issuing bank, this being the key difference and the key advantage in a letter of credit, which then must collect the money from its client. Therefore, the principal character of a LC is that it is a potential claim against the bank rather than a bank's client. An LC substitutes the bank's credit for its client. The seller's risk is mitigated from the risk that the buyer will not pay to the risk that the bank will be unable to pay, which is unlikely. A letter of credit is less risky for the merchant, but more risky for a bank, though banks accept full liability in both cases. Reserve Bank of India has also issued detailed guidelines to commercial banks in respect of non-fund-based credit facilities. Banks should normally open letters of credit for their own customers who enjoy credit facilities with them. But the customers should be maintaining current account only and not enjoying any credit limits, should not be granted LC facilities except in case where no other credit facility is needed by the customer. The bank has to ensure that the customer is able to retire the bills drawn under LC as per the financial arrangement already finalized in all cases of opening of letters of credit. The conditions relating to obligate being a customer of the bank enjoying credit facilities as discussed in case of letters of credit are equally applicable for guarantees also accept guarantee facilities also cannot be sanctioned in isolation. Financial guarantees will be issued by the banks only on behalf of those customers with whom the bank has sufficient experience and is satisfied that the customer has the necessary experience and means to perform the obligations under the contract and is not likely to commit any default. For those customers that enjoy credit facilities with other banks, banks should not normally issue guarantees. After detailed appraisal of customer's requirement is completed and the bank is fully satisfied about the genuineness of the need of the customer, then only the limits of co-acceptance of bills will be sanctioned by the banks. Further customers who enjoy other limits with the bank should be extended such limits. Before discounting or purchasing bills co-accepted by other banks for rupees 2 lakh and above from a single party, the bank should obtain written confirmation of the concerned controlling office of the accepting bank. Where banks open LC and also co-accept bills drawn under such LC, the discounting banks, before discounting such co-accepted bills, must ascertain the reason for co-acceptance of bills and satisfy themselves about the genuineness of the transaction. Co-acceptance facilities will normally not be sanctioned to customers enjoying credit limit with other banks. Now let's see how much you have learned till now. State whether the following statements are true or false. Financial guarantees are those which secure performance of contract not involving loan transaction or financial obligations. False. 
Red Clause Letter of Credit is a letter of credit which is backed by other letters of credit and is also used when middleman is involved in a sale transaction. False. Advising bank is the bank which advises the letter of credit to the beneficiary and is known as advising bank. True. Before we end, let us briefly revise what we have studied so far. The credit facilities given by the banks where actual bank funds are not involved are termed as non-fund based facilities. A letter of credit is opened by an importer or applicant to ensure that the documentation requested reflects and proves that the seller has performed under the requirements of the underlying sales contract by the exporter by making them conditions of the letter of credit. Guarantee is a contract to perform the promise or discharge the liability of a third person in case of his default. In the ordinary course of business, the bank often issues guarantees on behalf of its customer in favor of third parties. A bank guarantee and a letter of credit are similar in many ways, but they are two different things. The main difference between the two credit security instrument is the position of the bank relative to the buyer and seller of a good, service or basket of goods or services in the event of the buyer's default of payment. These financial instruments are often used in trade financing when suppliers or vendors are purchasing and selling goods to and from overseas customers with whom they don't have established business relationships. The Reserve Bank of India has also issued detailed guidelines to commercial banks in respect of non-fund-based credit facilities.